Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, we're gonna see about an amazing library called a Selenide APM, which can help you to solve a lot of problems what we have with APM, right? Many of you might be using APM for our mobile automation uh, needs, and I am a big fan of APM because I've been using APM for almost uh, five years now. I have seen the evolution of APM, and it's been fantastic, uh, to be honest. Um, APM is one of the best tools available in the market that can do mobile automation. But the important stuff is uh, if you want to write APM code, it is not as easy as we think, right? So Selenid APM uh, is a beautiful wrapper around APM, uh, which can help you to write tests at a much faster rate, right? So I'm going to give you some uh, you know important uh, glimpses what it can provide in this particular video. In the coming videos, I might dive deep into each topics, but this is an introduction video where I want to show you some code examples um, uh, where the code is written in APM and in Selenate, right? So so yeah, that's that's what this trade is all about. Uh, I hope you will find this useful and you will start using Selenate, right? Um, so that's why I call it as mutated Java APM client. So uh, it is very, very powerful and it will help you to write much faster code, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, so this is this is what the main advantage of using Selenium API. So it is free, it is open source, and it is it helps you to write fluent and concise readable code, and it's also very stable. So um, I am one of the active contributor to Selenium API. I'm very proud about that because if somebody is using this tool, I feel very happy because this will solve a lot of uh, their problems, right? Uh, so yeah so if you have any issues do write it in the github i'll i'll pick it up and then i'll solve it as well uh, so again very important advantage is there is no boilerplate that we normally get in uh, apm there is no ajax problems like if you are using some uh, react based uh, mobile apps or stuff like that you know there is no ajax related problems or waiting problems uh, there is no timeouts uh, like you don't have to worry about screenshots we take care of that and you don't have to even worry about stale element reference exception. We handle everything by ourselves. And all you have to do is write just test code. We build everything else for you. Uh, and sometimes if you feel, you know, there is no such feature available in Selenium APM, then you can easily go back to uh, APM, right? So this is built on top of APM, so you don't have to worry about it, right? Again, most importantly, you can also contribute uh, from your side, right? So all you have to do is just concentrate on the business logic, right? Um, APM is a fantastic tool for driving mobile apps, uh, like Selenium is for driving web apps, but Selenium APM is a, is a fantastic testing tool, right? It, it has inbuilt assertions, it has inbuilt weightings, and it does everything for you, so you don't have to do a lot of work. And APM is a very low level stuff, and Selenium APM is a, is a high level stuff, right? So this is how the Selenium APM test might look like. So you basically define, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is the browsing strategy? Like what is the browser that you want to use? Like, you know, you define how you want to launch your apps. And then you simply call launch app. And then you can write uh, dollar indicates find element. You find the element based on this X path. Uh, you apply a waiting strategy of visibility. And then, you know, you, you, you click. But instead of clicking, you are performing a tap native event. Again, guys, performing a tap in APM, uh, you have to write a lot of code. But with Selenium APM, it's just as simple as this. And let's say you want to verify this element is visible. It is pretty hard there. But here, look at the readability. Uh, I want to find this element, and then I want to verify that it is visible or not. So this is how easy it is to write Selenium APM test. We are going to see a lot of examples for this. So APM code, if you want to wait for an element to be visible or interactable you know you have to write a lot of code for example this is the element and i have to create new web driver wait uh, what's the time and then what is the expected conditions and then i have to perform some operation on it so this is how it is right so again imagine an application right you might not always work uh, for the visibility sometimes you might want to check for elements a text present in an element want to wait, wait for interactability, clickability, the lot of wrappers you have to build around. And this is easy, like 
you know we always uh, feel something very comfortable is easy task but this is not easy like you are spending efforts on something that is not your original task right so building the wrappers might look good okay you might feel very confident that you are building wrappers but if, if there is a way that you know somebody else built for you um, then you can directly use it right and that's what we're going to do here so find the element and then check should be visible which means it'll wait until the element is visible and then in the previous case look at this expected condition dot text to be present in element so there is a lot of code that we are writing here and here it is very simple and concise we are waiting for this particular element to have a text of animation so as simple as that let's say you want to wait for a custom amount of time um, the interactable and you want to wait for the element to be become interactable for a period of 10 seconds you can also do that and you can also wait for an element to get disappeared so that's how concise your code will be if you use uh, uh, smart weightings from selenid apm and you don't have to worry about stale element reference exception we handle everything inside ourselves so you don't have to worry about it um, again similarly uh, dollar uh, returns find element double dollar returns find elements and it is as simple as you can apply should be size is greater than four size is greater than or equal to four size is equal to four uh, you can say this find elements and check whether the text in each of them is equal to this so this is how concise your code will be imagine you have to write the same code in in apm so how you want to assert it how will you do it so you have to find the elements you need to get the text from each of them store it in a list or a collection and then you have to use some assertion libraries uh, like test ng j unit or assert j in order to assert to list but here everything is taken care of by itself all you have to do is write a very simple piece of code and sleep the remaining time um, again working with deep links is one of the important stuff when, com when it comes to mobile app automation um, so deep, deep links work differently on android differently on ios they also behave differently on emulators and simulators so if you are someone uh, who thinks i can directly use apm into my scripts uh, you might spend a lot of efforts uh, in in making the deep links work right for example in case of android you have to write a code if the test and if the test is using android then i have to you create a map and then i have to paste the deep link url package and then need to call the execute script but for ios the, the case is entirely different you have to launch safari and then you have to identify the url bar uh, paste the url there press enter and sometimes uh, the if it is a real device uh, there will be some um, you know open button that will come but in simulator will not come so you have to even handle that right so sometimes your test might work in local simulators but not work in real device so so there are a lot of complications involved in handling deep links for ios but this is this is if you work with the apm but if you consider using uh, deep links from serenade apm you have to just call open android deep link pass the deep link and the package if we're trying to open it for ios just pass this you don't have to worry about emulator simulator real device android or ios we take everything for you uh, and then uh, APM has beautiful locating strategies where you can write something like this. Uh, it might look very simple. Hey, I'm going, this is normal X part. What is, what is the problem with this? But if you notice uh, the stuff here, um, these are all syntax at the rate, uh, you know, the single quotes, double quotes, uh, the, the square brackets, they are all, these are all nice. What we want to do is we want to find an element by the attribute content description so content description is the attribute and the value is views. That's it. So you don't have to worry about double slashes. Um, I don't care about what is the you know class name. I don't even have to worry about uh, the square brackets. Again, guys, this might look very simple, but if you're someone who worked on APM, you might know sometimes you will forget to include a square bracket, uh, right? So closing square bracket. And then you have to again fix it you finding it, you know, debugging it is also a becoming a very difficult task, right? So instead of all that, you can simply use these kind of additional selectors that we have built um, for your needs. Again, if you want to 
use, uh, let's say, graphy. Instead of full text like graphics, we want to use graphy as a partial text. Then it's it, instead of using contains, at the rate text, and all that stuff, we can just use with attribute. And what is the attribute name? Attribute name is text. Uh, and the graphics partial string is graphy, right? So um, I have extracted this as a variable here, but yeah, you can also use something like this. Again, you can also give tag and the con content description. So the tag is this and the content description value is this. So we have a lot of methods built up with APM select task class. You can uh, read about it and then you can leverage all of that in your code. Um, so again, important stuff. If you want to do a lot of native events, you have to write a lot of code. Before Java Client 8, uh, if you want to perform any of these events, you have to uh, use touch actions class. From 8.x Java Client, it has been now replaced with sequence class. So it is also somewhere that you have to write a lot of code. If you haven't watched my APM playlist on gestures, I highly recommend to watch them and understand how complex it is to write these codes. But here, you don't have to worry about any of these find the element, wait for the element to be visible, and then perform a click event. But don't just perform a click event, perform it as a native event called tap. So if you want to perform a click, don't perform it normal click. I want to do a double tap on it. Here, uh, click the element, but uh, you know, um, with X, X and Y coordinates, this is the X and Y offset that you want, you can pass to the element. Let's say you want to perform a long press, you can call the long press. You want to perform drag and drop, you can do something like this. It's as simple as writing very simple lines of code, but in APM, you have to write a lot of code for this and you have to also test them whether it is working on different de devices, right? And you can also build custom conditions. Like here, we are waiting for the element to be visible. Let's say in your case, you want to uh, use a different condition. You can also do that. Uh, by writing a lot of uh, logic like this. Uh, and then you can directly use something like this. But, you know, it's it's up to you. Again, we will cover this in detail uh, in the in the upcoming videos. So don't worry about it. All you have to understand is you can write your own logic of custom weightings, right? And uh, by extending this uh, condition class. So don't worry about any of that. Uh, and let's say if you want to scroll to an element, okay? Again, uh, there is a lot of logic involved here. So you want to check what is the Java client version you are using, whether you need to use touch actions or sequence. Um, it is not as simple as scrolling in web. In the APM, you have to find whether the element is visible in different ways, right? Um, you And for Android and iOS, the, the checks varies. For example, in Android, you can look for a set displayed method. But in iOS, you have to look for an attribute called visible and check whether it is true or false. So there is a lot of stuff here. Again, if you are using by locators, you can use find elements and verify the size is not zero uh, to make sure that you want to still do scrolling. Uh, but in iOS, you have to use the visible attribute. So there are a lot of complications here involved in scrolling an element in APM. You have to also test them and make sure it works. Right. Every time you start an APM session, it takes a lot of time to run and, and to you know actually see it working. But let's say in Serenity APM, all you have to do is find the element and do dot scroll to, which means it will scroll a maximum of 30 times in downward direction by default and try to find the element. If it finds it, it will click on it. If it not finds it, it will throw the error. Again, if you don't want to scroll down, you can also do scroll and then out, which means it will scroll a maximum of 30 times in upward direction to find, find the element. Again, if you want to restrict the number of times, uh, how many times you want to scroll, um, you can do like this, right? So you can, it is also customizable based on your needs. Um, again, if you want to implement your own way of uh, commands, like clicking, uh, double clicking, whatever you want to do, let's say, for example, you want to uh, do a triple click, this is some weight, weight requirement, right? So if you want to even do that, uh, Selenade also supports it. Create a class called a whatever the name and then implement the command of Selenade element. That's it. You, you can provide all your implementation here. And then in your code, you can simply use element, uh, wait for it to be visible, and then perform new triple click. That's it. So whatever the class name here, you just call, create an instance for it. And this will execute that for you. Um, so that's how simple it is. Um, yeah.
So yeah, um, there will be a lot of questions. Um, I know uh, you can also drop them in the comments. Uh, I will definitely look into them and answer them. But I, but in the coming videos, I'll cover uh, all the important stuff related to cell night and hopefully you will like it, right? Uh, I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada, bye-bye from Amudan. Bye-bye, guys.